Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. The specs for the Intellivision Amico have been released, and in this video we're going to take a look at them. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, I'm in a good mood today. It's Canada Day, so I've got the day off from work, and this allows me to do some filming right in the morning. I've got my coffee ready to go. I'm still wearing my pajamas here, and I haven't styled my hair. That's why I got the hat on. And I noticed that there were specs that were leaked for the Intellivision Amico, so let's take a look at them. Now, full credit goes out to Ars Technica here. I'll leave a link to this article in the description below, and I do recommend checking it out. It's gonna contain far more information than I go over in this video. If I scroll down the page here, there is a ton of information, including the 10 commandments of game design, and I'll go over those in just a second. Uh, but the first thing I wanted to check out were the CPU specs. So I can see it's using a Snapdragon 624 and Adreno 506 GPU. We have six gigabytes of flash storage and two gigabytes of RAM. So what exactly does this mean? First up, the GPU was released back in 2015 and it was used on chips like the Snapdragon 625. Now the 625 is a little bit different than the 624 that's on the Amico, uh, but a comparable cell phone here is the Samsung Galaxy C7. Now this was released back in 2016. It has been discontinued and it was a lower mid-tier model. If you're not familiar with the Galaxy C7, an extremely similar chipset was used in the Motorola Moto G5 Plus, which was released back in 2017. And for some even more smartphone comparison, apparently the Intellivision developer portal also stated uh, that the ZTE ZMAX Pro Z981 with a Snapdragon 617 and Adreno 405, which are considerably lower powered than the 624 and 506, uh, is a good benchmark test and runs just a little slower than the Amico hardware. This is a little alarming. The ZTE Z Max Pro was released back in 2016, and it's even a slower phone than the ones I just went over. Now, to be perfectly fair here, looking at the release date alone really isn't the best measure of performance. I mean, if we did that, then the Nintendo Switch would also be outdated and underpowered. Oh wait, it kind of is. So let's take a look at this chip in a little bit more detail. So it's using the APQ8053, the 8053 Lite to be specific here. If I scroll down the page, there are some more technical specifications. The Wi-Fi on this device isn't actually that bad at all and should be completely adequate for what they're trying to do. Uh, Bluetooth on this is using 4.1, which is a little bit outdated, but also the same Bluetooth that's on the Switch. It does have an 8-core CPU running at 1.8 gigahertz. Now, the CPU is a little bit outdated, and the GPU on this is the Adreno 506, which is also outdated, what we just went over. Now, I was able to find an extremely similar setup on the market. This one's a little bit different, though it has three gigs of RAM instead of two, uh, but it uses the same CPU and same GPU. And if I take a look at the version of Android here, uh, it uses Android 8.1, which is Oreo, and this is a little bit outdated as well. Now, there is no guarantee that the Amico is using Android 8.1, but the release date of the operating system does check out with the release date of these chips. Now, after going over those specs, I can determine that the Amico does seem a little bit underpowered in today's world. That's obviously going to have an impact on what kind of games can go on this device. I mean, we've already seen trailers for some of them, at a very, very high level, but there's also here the 10 commandments of game design that was released. So let's see how that plays into the games that will be on the device. Number one, every game must be E rated. Well, that kind of speaks for itself. So there's not gonna be anything overly crazy, overly violent on this system, which tells me it's geared toward younger kids. Uh, number two, every game must be playable with very little instruction. Again, geared towards a younger audience who might not have experienced gaming or just inexperienced gamers. Uh, number three, every game must be balanced to allow players with very different ability levels to still have fun. Again, geared toward a more casual and younger audience. Number four, every game must rate seven out of 10 or above on Intellivision's quality control scale. I don't know what this means. Uh, number five, every game must cost less than $10. This tells me two things. Number one, the games are affordable. Number two, development costs for these games are going to be very low, which will result in a poor quality of game. I mean, maybe number four is to help keep that in check, but at the same time, if you're trying to make a profit on a game here, you're selling it for a maximum of $10, 
the effort going into the game must not be that great. Number six here, every game must support the official Intellivision controllers. Well, that kind of makes sense. Uh, number seven, every game must be 2D or 2.5D. 3D models okay, but no free roaming 3D worlds. And this to me could be one of two things. One, it might be hardware limitations and nothing pushing the device to its maximum may be impacting frame rates. And number two here, just trying to keep the game simple, which would play into all of the other points. Number eight, every game must be an Intellivision exclusive. Even ports must be unique in some way. So this is telling me they're trying to give you a unique experience on the Amico. If Angry Birds or something like that is your favorite game on the Amico, it'll be a little bit different than everywhere else. Uh, number nine, no in-game purchasing or DLC. I actually like this one. There are no hidden surprises here. No loot crates or anything of that nature. What you buy is what you get in the game. Uh, number 10, every game should try to incorporate local multiplayer or two-player mode if possible again for that Amico experience, which I can understand. Now, a few weeks back, I talked about the Amico based on their E3 presentation. I talked about what it was and what it wasn't. And a lot of that information still holds true today. So I'll drop a link to that video in the description below and I do recommend checking it out. The Amico is not a gaming powerhouse and I don't think it's made for hardcore gamers. To me, this is made for a younger audience or maybe a more casual audience people who probably aren't very familiar with video games at all, or maybe people who are familiar with mobile games. The system to me does seem a little bit gimmicky. At $250 here on GameStop for the base system, that also seems a little bit expensive. Now, I haven't used one of these, I don't know how it plays, but at the same time here, for the specs in this system and for the games lineup that I've seen, uh, this seems a little bit pricey. I mean, on one hand, I want to say, hey, yeah, it's a, you know, it's not a bad price for casual gamers. But on the other hand here, for 50 bucks more, you can get a Nintendo Switch. Are the games more expensive on the Switch? Generally, yes. Are the games more fun on the Switch? Well, arguably, yes, based on what I've seen. Now, the Amico has been getting a lot of negative press, and I don't know if all of it is warranted. Uh, but based on the information that I just found out via the developer portal here, via the Ars Technical article, I think the Amico has a really big uphill battle in front of it. I think the odds are stacked against it in terms of whether or not it's going to succeed. And I think it's largely due to the price of this. I think it's going to be a little bit too expensive for a lot of people out there. Overall here, I think the Intellivision is in a really weird place. I mean, it's cheaper than the major consoles out there, but not cheap enough to put it into its own category. It's 50 bucks less than the Switch, but also 50 bucks more than the Switch Lite. The Switch Lite is more geared toward a one player, but at the same time here, the price of this does keep it in contention with those major consoles. And on the other hand here, the games on this are nowhere near in contention with those major consoles. Yes, they are cheaper, some of them are cheaper. I mean, there are some free to play games on those major consoles that would arguably blow those Amico games out of the water. So the Amico games here trail behind the competition. The price is kind of within the competition and the hardware specs, well, they're also well below the competition. So this, I don't know. I don't know if the Amico is gonna pan out here. It's just in a really weird place. Anyways, that is all I've got for today. Let me know your thoughts on the Amico in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like, hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.